This video will provide an overview of the AGV module in Flexim, the first of several videos in the AGV module tutorial series, and follows the material covered in Lesson 1 of the AGV section of the user manual tutorials. The module enables users to easily build and model systems for automatic guided vehicles, or AGVs. It uses a unique set of objects to set up the system and utilizes familiar concepts and terminology such as looking for work and control points. If you haven't already, download the AGV module by clicking on Help in the menu bar and then Online Content. Just click Download and Install to add the module, and be aware that you'll be asked to restart Flexim. Once it's installed, you'll see a new panel in your library called AGV that contains some new objects. Let's start by laying out some straight paths. Click on the object, but don't drag it into Flexim like you would other objects. When this object is selected, your cursor will enter straight path mode. Click once in the 3D view to mark the beginning of the path, and another to mark the end of the path. A path will be created between these two points. If you look at the middle of the path, you'll find an arrow indicating the direction the AGVs will travel on that path. The travel direction is determined by the start and end points you chose when you created the path much the same as connections in Flexim Objects Determine Flow. Create four paths in a square shape with gaps where the corners should be, then right-click to exit straight path mode. If you click on one of the paths you've created, you'll notice a red dot on each end. You can click and drag these dots to manipulate each end of the path. When the path is selected, you can also specify specific coordinates for the start and end points in the Quick Properties pane. Click on the Curved Path object and, just like we did with Straight Paths, click on the Model view to start the path and then drag your mouse around to create the shape of the curve, and even to create loops. You can even use your mouse's scroll wheel to change the Z-index of the curved path, raising or lowering the path. Once you've clicked a second time to set the path and have right-clicked to exit Path Creation mode, click on the path again to bring up three dots, two red ones on the ends and a green one in the middle. Clicking and dragging the green dot will let you change the radius of the curved path. Each of the red dots can be dragged just as in the straight path, but with a few differences. The ends will try to snap to certain angles, such as the 90 degree angle, and you can again raise or lower the ends with the mouse's scroll wheel. In the Quick Properties pane, each curved path has several options. You can specify the radius, the start angle, and the sweep angle. You can use curved paths to connect two straight paths together and also to create a new curved path that branches off a straight path. Simply click somewhere on the straight path when in curved path mode. When you branch off of a straight path, this will create a transfer, which is designated by a Y-shaped symbol. For now, delete any curved paths you've created because we're going to use the Join Paths object to fill in the gaps in our straight paths. Join Paths works like Curved Paths, except it's specifically created to join the ends of paths. Click on Join Paths to enter Join Paths mode, then click the ends of two different paths to create a curved path between them. You can then click on the connecting path and alter it just as you would with a curved path. When you change the radius, it changes the size of the straight paths connected to it. Join the ends of the straight paths to create a full loop. Now that we have a path, we can add some Flexim objects. First, drag out a source and a sink, place them at opposing ends of your path, and connect them. Now we can add control points. Drag one out from the library like you would any regular object in Flexim, and drop it on the path near the source, then drag another out near the sink. Notice that the diamond-shaped control point has a cross inside of it. That means it's connected to the path. Drag it off the path and the cross will disappear, indicating that it's no longer associated with a path. When you connect the source to the control point, it will be automatically recognized as a destination, denoted by a blue connection line. Finish by connecting the sink to its control point. Drag out a dispatcher and two AGV task executors and connect the dispatcher to each of them. Then, connect an AGV to the sink's control point using a regular connection. When you do, a dialog will appear asking you to specify whether this object is a Traveler AGV or a destination. Connect this and the other AGV as Traveler AGVs, and note that this connection is visually displayed as a red line. Finally, we need these AGVs to transport the flow items from the source, so use a center port connection to link the dispatcher to the source, and then check the Use Transport box in the source's Quick Properties pane.
Reset and run the model. The AGVs will pick up flow items at the source and transport them to the sink, following the path we've created. This is a simple model designed to show basic principles, and if you let the model run for a few moments, the AGV system will experience deadlock, with each AGV occupying a specific control point. This happened because when AGVs travel, they look ahead to the next control point and attempt to allocate that point. If they can't, they just stay where they are. This type of deadlock is called circular weight. The AGV module provides a tool to help you detect and diagnose deadlock in the system. Right-click on any AGV object and select AGV Network Properties from the menu. Go to the General tab and check the box that says Check for Deadlock. If you reset and run the model again, a window will pop up within a few seconds indicating that the system is in deadlock and telling you what caused it. This can be prevented in the current example by adding one or more control points, which will keep our AGVs from stopping at control points that are blocking another AGV. Add two more control points to the path, one on the left side and another on the right side. If you reset and run now, the AGVs will no longer reach deadlock, but you might notice that they are consistently stopping to maintain a two control point gap between them. Why is this? The AGV module has a mechanism for control point allocation and deallocation, and the conservative default setting only deallocates a control point when the AGV reaches its next control point. Let's change this now. Hold the Shift key and drag over the entire path to select all of the control points. You'll select other objects as well, but that's okay because they won't be affected. Click to highlight one of the selected control points and find the deallocation type setting in the Quick Properties. Using the drop-down menu, select Deallocate When Past Current, and click Apply to All Selected to apply the setting to each of our selected control points. Hold Shift and click on any blank space in the model view to deselect all the objects. This change will set our control points to deallocate their space as soon as the AGV leaves, instead of waiting until the AGV reaches the next control point. This change will set our control points to deallocate their space as soon as the AGV leaves instead of waiting until the AGV reaches the next control point. Reset and run to see how the model was affected. If you intend on continuing in the AGV module tutorial series, it would be a good idea to save your model now, as we'll be using it in the next video. Thank you for watching. To dive deeper into the AGV module, check out the other entries in the AGV module tutorial series.